Chris? Chris? What? Dude, you got a problem. Listen, I didn't do anything. This is clearly something that you just need to stop. It, it was a Kickstarter. I only had one chance to get it. And so, then I had another chance. I think we need an intervention. So what, what are we looking at this time? Well, this is the Edge Dawnfall. This is actually their second Kickstarter. Okay. I backed it twice. Um, <laughs> is that why you have so much crap? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, so I backed the first one, and I get it, get my pledge, and then I backed it again, and I emailed the guy, and he's like, okay, cool, we'll give you, like, credit. And so I got an all-in pledge for the Edge Dawnfall version 1.6. All right, well, where do we even start with all this stuff? Um, well, I mean, obviously, we start opening it. You want to check it out? I think we got to start with the big box. Yeah, let's start with the big, big box. Big box is always the best box. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, let's do it. Look, the core box it is. Okay, so we've got the Edge Dawnfall War Chest. So what you see here is there's six different factions in this War Chest. Each one has its own kind of them thematic elements. Uh, there's elements of technology and elements of like mythology um, that all play into the theme. Okay. So let's get this lid off of here. Big lid off. There's a lot of stuff in this box. Yeah. Don't open that. Why does it say secret? Because it's a secret. Secret campaign envelope. I guess like this is, a, you only open it like later in the campaign. Okay. Don't ruin the surprises. So, all right. So, let's see what we got here. We got a campaign book. All right. So, let's look at all these books first because there's a mess of them. Okay. So, you got a whole slew of books which... They seem to be different types of campaigns, just kind of thumbing through them. So the, the, what these campaign books are is each one is a different set of factions that are running a campaign against each other that are rivals. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there's from what I understand, there's like 90 hours of total gameplay just in the campaign books, from okay. what I understand. So you can play just the campaigns. And is that something where you can... Like, are you just playing against yourself? Like, is no, there... no, no. I think it's like I think it's adversarial. Okay. To where we would play against each other, and then here's a rule book that I think is just for like skirmishes. Yeah. This is, this rule books. Okay. So <laughs> there's a lot, a lot going on with the rule book. I'll kind of put it up here just so people can kind of see it, but it kind of gives you the details of what all the cards mean, some of the dice mechanics, which has custom dice. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, combat and shooting. So shooting, so those of you that like the ranged attacks, all about it. Quick reference rules are always good. So this back page is a sweet setup. I hate it when you got to look through a rule book for all the main mechanics. And this, the, the interesting thing about this that I know you'll like about this game, Pete, is there's multiple paths to victory. So it's not just playing for victory points. It's also playing to... Um, to kill all of your opponent's models. It's playing to your faction deck. You know, there's there's multiple things here. All right, so we got a hex system. So this is a hex movement-based game. Yeah, and this is like an advanced hex system. So like each one of these larger hexes counts as a space, and then you're able to do things within the space. So if you're moving, from what I understand, if, if you're moving one, you'd move to the next one, but you would position yourself differently depending on how large the model is that you're placing in there. Okay. Now, this board is... Oh, there's a back. Yeah, so there's there's multiple elements to this. So there's two sizes this board, but if you were to play with, like, four players instead of two, you would add another board on... Somebody to, else's board, okay. Yeah, so, th so you can expand the board depending on... So do you know what all these card placement setups are on the board yet? Yeah, so if you look at the card placements, um, there's one that I believe is for your faction deck, and, and these are on both sides. There's one for your faction deck. Each of these are... It depends on which models you decide to bring with your faction. So... You don't have to always take the same models. You can choose a selection of five models depending on your faction. Um, then there's also these spaces that are right here. 
where you're going to house like your crystals and things like that, depending on if they're exhausted or... Now, is this a point system? Like, do you build up to so many points? You, you do that, but you're also trying to kill models if that's a path to victory for you. Like, there, there's multiple scenarios for victory. Okay. All right, cool. So, and that's a nice, sturdy cardboard, too. It's not yeah. flimsy. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, what puts all this on the left well, here? Uh, one other thing that was in oh, on okay. that side there is these faction sheets. And this sort of reminds me a little bit of like Twilight Imperium, okay. where like each faction is asymmetrical. So it's not everyone has all of the same models. Each one has its own characteristics and traits. Nice. And I don't know the full extent of how all these get used, but I know that on each of these you place stickers so you're creating a campaign um, that has its own individual story and changes over the course of the campaign if you decide to play that way. So getting a model killed early on means they're not available later in the campaign. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so we got those, and then it looks like here are the stickers that you would place depending on what happens in that campaign. Huh. What happens when you run out of stickers? Well, I don't know how many times this is designed to be played <laughs> that way. Maybe once we get done with the campaigns, then it's just like player versus player or whatever. Holy crap. So is there a deck building mechanic to this game? Yes. And and each faction has a preset yeah, you can see deck. There's like a faction deck kind of quick reference. Yep. And I'm guessing this is probably the amount of crystals you have to spend when you want that, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, or, or how you would power it up or okay. what you need to collect. So here's another another map. Oh, so there's two um, four yeah. down there. So yeah, you, you could, could play four. Yeah, yeah, you could easily play four. Okay. And then we've got all sorts of like little tokens and things that I'm sure we'll need holders for and to sort out. So the cool thing about this and the way this is boxed is each faction is split in its own box and each one has its own symbols. So if you take out a bunch of models and you don't know where they go, you just have to follow the symbols for that uh, faction to put it away. And you can just remove out whichever models you want to play with. So you don't have to carry this whole box everywhere. If I was coming over to your house and I was just playing with whatever models I want, I would just take that set. And there you go. Okay. All right. So the first campaign book is Chapter versus Demons. So this is the Chapter Faction. And it, when you get it, it comes stacked nice and neat. So it's almost already, car you know, different compartments that will look nice for you. And... When you look at it, it just models look cool just right off the bat. So it looks like you come with some kind of blood token. Uh, uh, that's that's a, I think that's a counter for victory points. Okay, counter for victory points. You get dice that come with it. And the dice are really cool because, like, these yellow dice you would use normally, and you can pay to use the red ones, which are stronger dice. Yeah. Yep. We'll do this and that, and then we'll call it good. And then I'll find him, and then we'll keep going. All right, so looking at the models, the first one that, I mean, sticks out to me is this big guy. Yeah, so all of the model sizes and things Order. matter. It's actually a female. Let's pull some of these babies out. Yeah, that's a nice model. Yeah, right. So we have, we'll kind of separate them by the two boxes. And you do, I'm guessing this is your faction pack with... Your different abilities yep. for the chapter. That's what I understand it to be as well. Oh, these are kind of these plague doctors you were talking about. Yeah. So these plague doctors. I gotta get this guy back on the base. So that's you broke him. That's funny because I'll probably want to remove these from the bases to paint them and then put them back on the bases. Yeah, because so. I think since this is like faction specific. You probably would just leave the bases there, their faction color. Yeah, I think that'll be easier to like sort them out and everything like that. All right. So we got these babies. But yeah, like the way, so the way that this game works is like your larger models have a much greater impact on the board. So like if you were to move into a hex that had this smaller model in it, you would move this into the hex and it would bump that model out of the hex. But you would say like base base and okay. attack or whatever it is. But yeah, this, I mean, this is the star model for this game, or for this faction, faction I guess. Um, and yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to paint some of these up. Yeah, it's a cool model. It's almost like a mechanical angel. 
Yep. Is kind of the vibe I'm getting from that. And, and it, they've got the six sides. I, I was going to say, that's the thing that you didn't quite see when you first look at the model, is that there's this side that this this lady, this angel has behind her back. So it's just a really sweet looking model. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's look at these guys. These guys are kind of cool. We got these three guys. They're like plague doctors. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, they're plague doctors, but they also have flamethrowers, and they also have these shields. So just kind of really gnarly looking models. I don't know what they do, but they're causing flame and destruction upon somebody. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so we got those three. Got so some, we got some other knights. It looks like yeah, you got a like knight there. Yeah, these are paladin looking guys. This guy's a paladin. And so you've got these, these guys over here with their swords and their battle axes. And I know you love a battle axe because you play Baratheons on the Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> and then these must be your kind of foot soldiers over here. Yep, and then it looks like somebody took some Space Marine inspiration for these guys right here. Um, they kind of have that stockiness, that stocky build. Okay, so, and this is everything that you possibly could bring to the faction? Is, is I, well, right? I think you'd choose, like, five elements of whatever it is. So, um, I don't know if some of the models can represent multiple types of units or what, Yeah. but you would only bring, like, a certain percentage. Okay, so that's the chapter. So, we'll kind of put these up, and we'll go ahead and look at the next one, which I guess you're excited about. I was saying, these do stack back in pretty nice and neat. They kind of snap into the plastic. So until you would get some kind of... Um, I don't even know if I'd do foam on these guys. I don't because, know. like, they're, they, they fit so well with exactly... Yeah, like I said, they snap back in pretty good. I, I, think, I think foam is unnecessary. With how well these just kind of go right back into place. I think that goes on yours, yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, so this will go like this. And then everything is everything is balanced to whatever symbol it is. And then this will stack on top of here. Boom. Like so. Alright. Next action. So we got the demons. Alright, so the demons. So these are the ones that are looking really fun to me. Um... And, yeah, let's take these babies out. Okay. So, once again, you get these. And I love the art and kind of the look of these faction decks. They just look cool. They're really solid kind of cardstock used on them. So, not cheaply made. You got something else in there that the other one didn't have. Yeah, so there's like these little uh, life counter tokens that you would use with all of them. I get the feeling that a lot of these uh, little things like the... Um, like the tokens or the dice are shared and they just happen to be they happen to be delivered with each individual faction okay so we got we got these demons what sort of demons do you got uh, I got the big guy and then got these Weird, crawling, gonna eat your face monstrosities, and then some four-armed kind of dude. Okay, so everything from, it looks like Rangosh there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got, uh, uh, what, what's the name of the guy from Street Fighter with the forearms? Oh, boy, uh, it's um, <laughs> Gaul, no, Dolls. Doll? Might be doll. No, no, uh, I think it's something else. Anyway, whatever. And then we've got like some lesser demons here that have like the horns and things like that on there. Um, and then what else do we got? We got like these little possessed antler worshiper guys. It's almost, and so it's kind of like, I don't know what this faction does, but it looks like they want to get in your face and eat and smash you. Yeah. Well, I mean, anytime you have got like these demon dogs. I think that that is probably a good indicator that, um, yeah, you want to go for blood. <laughs> so, so this might be the Chris pick, the Chris faction. I have a strong feeling. Yeah, this guy is definitely definitely gnarly looking. That guy's the cool model out of the pack, for sure. And I get the feeling that the biggest models in this game are all going to be like the coolest ones. The largest models will be the coolest. Hopefully, models. you would hope that, but sometimes like. Playing uh, God tier, the, you think that, but then all of a sudden you get a model like Grimgut, 
And he's not the most aesthetically pleasing model, so... Yeah, that's true. Okay. So that was the demons. Gosh, so much crap in these boxes. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, for the that that pledge level, that all-in pledge, it looks like they really gave a lot of stuff, which is really nice. And we'll we'll get into it in a little bit and, you know, show the, the like, stretch goals and all that kind of stuff. Like, it, it's pretty elaborate boxes. Yeah. So, okay, so we got these guys. Okay, so next up we have the Faceless and the Reborn. So, in this one, you've got these little crystals, and let's pull these kind of together here. So, um, this one comes with the crystals in that little section, and you'll use these to kind of power up your units and your creatures and all that kind of stuff. Cool. All right, so, oh yeah, another big, nasty-looking model with a tiny head. So. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like he's like in some sort of like living exoskeleton yeah, or like, something like that. like he killed something and put it together with some machines. Yeah. Yeah, these kind of have a biomechanical feel to them. Because these guys have spiky arm harnesses. And we'll... Gotta be careful with that. Ooh, what the... <laughs> Look at that dude. Yeah, so this dude is like... I don't know how well you can see it, but he's kind of like reaching out it's with like... Spewing out of the, whatever he's in. A chainsaw biomech type skeleton. There's the chainsaw right there. Now, the problem with this faction is, I don't know how often they're going to end up in the same hex, but they don't go necessarily great together. Yeah, they can, it can be a little bit confusing, um, you know, to piece them together. But I, I know that you don't have to put them all in the same hex. Okay. Like, So if you're moving into different spaces, this one can be in one space, this one can be in another. Like, they move independently, okay. uh, which is kind of a cool feature. Um, this is, uh, again, the, the big guy is definitely the star of the show, and I don't know how well you can see that head. Yeah, so this is like a there. biomechanical, uh, race that, I'm, I'm sure that, they said it was an accident, so maybe they spliced, you know, somebody's body with machines, and then they kind of developed into, uh, into these monstrosities, because these are like something you would straight up have out of a nightmare. So the, these ones that I'm holding up right here, they kind of have this very interesting, like, living blades coming out of their arms. So definitely featuring that kind of biomech type of, uh, you know, look. And yeah. Feel. So. Yeah, definitely a really cool looking faction. Uh, if, you're, if you like more of, like, grotesque kind of mechanical biomass kind of models, I think you'll like this faction. The models are pretty gnarly for sure. That's cool. Not my not my cup of tea, if you ask me, model wise. Like I can I understand that it's cool and they're definitely uh, dynamic, which I always look for in models. But if you like cricks, I feel like this is the faction that you'll kind of be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Or what would be the equivalent in uh, 40k? Um, probably Necrons. Okay. They kind of use machinery and human bits from living things to keep them powered. Okay. They have like flayed ones, which it's basically these flayed these machines that put flayed skin over themselves. Okay, so that was the faceless, and now we got the reborn. So this might be our druid elfish kind of faction. It looks like. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. I'll let you start digging into it. I always give Pete the box with the cool big models because I, I know I I know what his thing is. Yeah. So you got some <laughs> kind of dryad right there where she's just. Really cool looking. And then you have these buffalo riders. Rider, I should say, singular. Come here, you. Dreadlock Rastas. Yeah, if you are if you like druids and werewolves, this is the faction you're going to like. You got two werewolves. You got a person covered in vines that's like riding this buffalo. Two werewolves and then the dryad, which is a really cool model. You take a look at that. And then I love how these guys are like these living trees or something. And so... Yeah, like dryads. Yeah, and th so they... I mean, it's like something straight out of Pan's Labyrinth, like if you've ever seen that movie. But they're just super cool. It looks like you're going to have like some sort of like little tremor type <laughs> creatures that you can 
amount of ammo. Good. That's never happened to me before. Yeah, right? Look at these little, little females. They're almost like... I mean, they're almost like sprites or uh, nymphs. Yeah, part, part naked lady. Slash tree <laughs> slash naked lady. So, yeah, I think if you're a druid kind of... Uh, elfish kind of fancy kind of person this is definitely the reborn faction is going to be the one you're probably going to like and kind of move towards alright pop on in there got yeah, ghoul model I like the, so far that now I, I like the uh, I like the angel chick faction so far the best but this is a close second for me okay Cards, once again, just really cool art and look to them. So that's really cool. I like that. Right, and they're standard size, so you don't have to get special sleeves, which is always annoying. Uh, if you play like a Song of Ice and Fire where you have those stupid tarot cards, it's kind of annoying sometimes. Come, come on with it, man. Let's go. Look, these ones are like a snug fit, okay? <laughs> Almost got like a golem kind of look there too. Yeah, right. Yeah, really cool models. I like that one a lot. It's a reborn. Well, you know you love, you know you love elves and druids. And well, stuff. you know I did play circle for a long time, so this definitely gives me a circle of Ouroboros kind of feel to it. Yeah. So the thing that I like is I was struggling a little bit to get these models back in there. Um, I like that it's a nice snug fit, right? Like it means that it's less likely to get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so who's next? Alright, so we got the Razak faction and then the Dervgar. Which Dervgar actually, now that I'm looking at some of these pictures, they might be my favorite. I just gotta see. What are, what are the colors on these guys? Uh, looks like gray and brown. Okay. So which one's the brown? Which one's the brown? That's the Dervgar. Is that the... Alright, so let's look here. Okay, so this... Is the Razak? Yes, the Razak. All right, so all right, yeah. Let's take a peek here. We got an Infinity Angel, which is what this guy should be. Oh. <laughs> Almost has like a General Grievous kind of feel to it with his multi multiple arms. Yeah, so uh, I get this is it might be a few, it's a it's a robot, so it probably doesn't have any. I get the feeling that this is kind of like the high tech. Like the the maybe the uh, convergence of Cirrus type yeah, it fashion. Yeah, definitely has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, super tech. So not Chris's faction. No, I'm 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 not a tech guy. So we'll see if I can play the other one in case you decide that you want to play these guys. All right. So what are we working with here? So we have this kind of shock stick, kind of sword wielding, four armed mechanical angel here with a shield. So this model's, this probably is my, the big model that I like the least so far. Uh, I'm not a big robot guy though, so keep that in mind. It looks cool, but so far probably my least favorite out of the centerpiece models. So I do like these little guys. Like, they definitely have like this, like, it looks like they're electro whips that they're whipping the ground with, or maybe like some sort yeah, of shield. They do have, if you look at kind of all the models, well most of them, they have kind of these effects built into the model, so you can paint that up as like electricity, because I'm guessing this faction uses a lot of, yeah, if you look at the cards, they use a lot of electricity to probably do their attacks, if you look at the card art. Yeah, like even right there. Yep. Yep, so, yeah, if you want a, if you want a super high-tech faction, this is going to be a good option for you. Yeah, and then you have a couple other ones that, I don't know, they just... Interesting looking like this one almost looks like some kind of samurai robot kind of Wasn't there a show back in the day like a robot samurai something? I, I, probably a billion shows that have been like that <laughs> Got me. You know what this kind of reminds me of like some of these is and not necessarily this faction But like some maybe some of the order ones even is did you ever watch exo squad when you were a kid? Nope Okay, well, that's a series about like guys that are in these mech suits and stuff I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to go, but that's the way you're going. Okay, yeah, this next faction might be the one. This, I think this is almost a dwarf faction, so I'm kind of excited. I see stunties. Stunties? 
and they have flame belchers and cannons and whatnot. Getting excited. Get hype. Alright. Here's the stuff that you'll like. Let's put these in All right. there. So. Alright, what the heck is going on here? Alright, so we got some things going on. Okay, so. Yeah, this might be my favorite faction so far. Oh, uh, yeah. Come to Papa. Oh, are these like some dwarf looking That's guys? That's what I was saying, man. They're like dwarves with. Okay, are you guys gonna They're kind of, kind of steampunky almost. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, look at these guys with these big old like can bazookas. Like, man, these guys are cool as hell. Yeah, these are models that Ty would like too. <laughs> this guy. Look at that. <laughs> so I don't know about how the integrity of this model will be with only like one leg to go on, but definitely a super cool model. Uh, and it looks like this guy doesn't have any legs. Yeah, it's like that's so, his wheelchair, right? Yeah, that's his wheelchair. Um, yeah, definitely going to have to play around. All right, so I don't know what what's what with this faction yet, but they have a bag full of, you got a banner, you have these models, which look like something coming out of the flames or spew or something, and they have these tentacles coming out of them, so I don't know what they're used for in this Maybe, maybe these are, because these aren't base specific, so maybe they're communal type models that you're using to set up flags or something on the board. Yeah, so we have the handy capable people over here, and then we have the dual wielding double buckler shields, but they have like flame jet packs on the back, so maybe these shields like are molten lava. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because if see. you... Uh, I get the feeling that they, these know. models, like, if you look at the detail on these models, like, the detail's incredible. Even little, like, faces that are in the in the armor. Let's see the flame dirties. And... Ooh, that's cool looking. Yeah, you'll definitely be able to put up some... Yeah, that's a cool model. Some really cool effects into these models. Lots of armor, lots of bronze. And this big kind of metal golem kind of look, like, this is just cool. Very steampunky, kind of dwarf-centered, work in the mines, just really cool models. So, so far, that's definitely my favorite faction. Yeah, that is that is your way. This is the way. <laughs> All right, Mando. Mando. <laughs> All right, sorry, I got, a, got extra things in there because it's a little baggy. Okay. And we'll put these handy capable people back. You know, it's nice when they include everybody. Yep. The last thing we need is for this to be like an EA Sports game. <laughs> yeah. Right, these ones you gotta be careful with. So I'm gonna kinda just set them in there. Cool. Snapped in, snapped in. Back where you were. Boom. I, mean, I think now is probably a good time for a little bit of a break if you want. I don't know if there's anything you want to handle or. No, we're good. Okay. So we'll just go on to the next one. Well, she's looking for popcorn because you left some on the ground. Just throw her out. There you go. Let's see if we can make these fit a little bit better. Thank goodness for the magic of editing. Yeah, right. We can even stop here if you want to like go get a drink or something. I don't need anything. Okay. I, I can keep going if you can. Yeah. I'm going to stop it just so it's chunked a little bit. Okay, cool. That way I'm not searching through like an hour and a half. Yeah, I might, well, I might as well take the time to kind of rebox all these things in so that it's not. Okay. So we've got these, th this guy that's, you know, like some sort of uh, mech creature. With a tongue coming out of where his dingling should be. <laughs> wow. So, wow. Well, that's what it is. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Then we have the robots, which that's kind of interesting. Can we take a look at that? Oh, my God. This dude's huge. So these guys are like the Devar? Uh, Chris broke them. What? What do you do, Pete? It was like that. Where did it break? Uh, somewhere. Either way, there you go. All right. 
<laughs> Careful with that sixth arm. Okay, so we've got oh, I got dwarf bikers, and these guys are the Razak, I think is yeah the Razak, and these are the dwarf. I'm just calling them dwarves. Okay. Oh, cool, and they've got like these mining yeah drill bikes. Like, drill. Yeah. I don't know what faction he belongs to, but he was in there too. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like, some of these guys are a little bit different, and I think that we'll kind of reveal. I don't know if this is from that darkness faction. That's probably from the darkness faction. But Yeah, that guy is huge, so he's crazy. And these drill bikers are just really, really cool. I like those a lot. Yeah, so these are basically expansion units, I would guess. Yeah, I think so. Which I know you're always a fan of expansions. Yeah. I mean, who isn't? Yeah, right. Be careful with that guy's arm. And it's already broken, so... <laughs> okay, wait, wait. I think there's stuff underneath here. What? More? Nope. Ah, boo. I would say they have that pretty deep for these. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, you gotta pop those in. Gotta get these guys fit. You set them in there all wreck shot. Authenticity. I'll have to read that later. All right. So we'll put that over there. Put this in here. And there's that stretch goal box. Uh, are we doing the box box? Um. Right, let's try. Let's try two of these either. other little boxes real quick. Yep. All right, so I think this is like a bonus faction that you could only get with the Kickstarter. Um, and I can't remember if this is also like a stretch goal or what, but this I is... I imagine. <laughs> this is the Darkness. The Darkness! Kalimame! I don't know. Well, it has enough models to be a faction, so I would guess yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, so the I'll let you break into the this. Darkness. Have, so this is two. yeah. So this is what that those models that had the black base in that stretch goal box must have been for. Yeah. Um, Sweet zombie Jesus! He has a pyramid for a hat. It's kind of very has has like an old world kind of feel to it, like you know, almost like zombies or mummies from Egypt, or this almost looks like an Oracle of Delphi kind of look to it. Again, this is one that like it totally has that you know. Uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth type feel to it. Yeah. Man, this model is cool as hell. Yeah. That like kneeling, dark. So I'm saying it has some kind of like twisted prophet kind of oracle look to it. And then this one looks like it's coming through one of those like star gates that we were showing earlier. Maybe it summons. Yeah, I don't know if this gets summoned out of that or what, but super cool. Yeah, those are cool. And then here's like some, some snake-like some tentacle Medusa. looking, <laughs> yeah, hentai looking. Shape. Yeah, these do have like a very <laughs> like oracle kind of myth mythological kind of feel to them. These ones, though, I'm worried about the integrity of it. Like they felt very yeah. kind of flimsy. Yeah, they do. So we'll see. This is the one you gotta kind of be careful. These guys are using like swords as stilts. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy looking models. All right. Oh, what's this? <laughs> this guy's got like tentacles coming out of his arms, and he has this weird Vega looking mask. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they're they're pretty cool looking models. Um, they clearly somebody put a lot of time and thought into designing these factions. Yeah. Each faction does have a unique. Yeah, those are them. They're smaller models, though. I would definitely try to think of ways to sturdy those a bit more because they are questionable at best as far as like uh, durability. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll be careful with this faction. We won't just trust it to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like, get your sausage fingers off the darkness. <laughs> You're breaking it. All right. That's cool. I mean, I'm guessing that means that other box over there is also a faction. Well, let's find out. Maybe we'll pile it on in there. So, yeah, and I, I really like the design of this, how, like, it's just an individual box. Comes You're, with all the models. Yeah, it comes with all the models in it. You can just take this box as is. You don't have to have a whole bunch of stuff. So this one is the Father of the Son. And we'll see what's in here. If this isn't, like, Paladin-based, I'm going to be very disappointed. Am I disappointed? I think you might be disappointed. Aww. We'll see. Whoa, I got a guy missing here. Oh, wait, no, he just fell down. <laughs> <laughs> he just hopped okay. out. All right, so we got these guys. Let's see what's all in here. These are not paladins. They do have some armor. And I don't know. I'm not crazy about that model. And this one just has... I'll just take out a few of these. But basically like a billion little spiders here and so there's not a lot of diversity this this box has all these different little spiders so I'm not a huge look. fan of the aesthetics of this I feel box. like this is like especially with like those growths out of the back of the the this model that it's sort of like part of that darkness box like the these these little spiky bits look like that kneeling model in that darkness box and the base color is the same mm, I don't know. so maybe this is like some sort of a darkness expansion thing i don't know not sure i would think that if one's the darkness and one's father of the sun that they were they would be at odds yeah that makes sense too i don't know we will find out we will find out we also have these cool art books and this one I think is for a different Awaken Realms game, ISS Vanguard. It looks like it's some sort of a sci-fi, but again, very like digital type artwork in there. And these just came as bonuses in the in the Kickstarter. Um, so I think that here's a lot of like concept pieces. There's that darkness model. Yeah. And we'll see if. Yeah, it looks like just a lot of art kind of references. Paint. The art looks great. Well, you got um, some painted models in the back of that. Oh, really? Yeah, right here. Okay, cool. So you got some references if you want some inspiration on how to paint your stuff. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is what I was talking about where you have... This is obviously done with some computer imaging, but this gives you an idea of how you can paint their electric, like, electric weapons. Oh. Yeah. So cool little ideas and little tidbits and i think it kind of gives you an example of like how the land will have like different things yeah and you have terrain. the factional nodes or whatever they are yeah okay that's cool give yeah. you some reference all right and i think we got just one more box uh, got the, the big boss expansion box yep so we got boss it's so i guess i'll show this first yeah so let's see if we can get all this in here so that's the boss expansion Kind of got got Godzilla in the background. Yeah, all right. So let's see what's in in this baby. All right. So we got more tokens. More tokens. Okay, these are going to be big, huge models that Pete loves, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So we got these. So let's break them out here. All right. And these are color specific, so I don't know if... Okay, so let's break out that demon one, and we'll go through order and demon... or. Whatever it was, chapter yeah. demon. So, um, yeah, it's super huge models. It looks like these are obviously going to be used in boss campaigns. I don't know if these are going to be playable in like competition with one another, or if you can only get to these through the campaign. Yeah, through through the campaigns. There's also a solo campaign with this. There's like just in campaign play. There's like something. I want to say 120 hours or something like that, just in campaign play in this yeah, I think, game. I think you said 90 earlier. Well, 90, I think, just in the uh, player versus player, but yeah. I think that it gets to, like, 120 when you do, like, solo campaigns and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so here we have... Okay. 
So here we have those two, the faceless and the reborn again. Yeah. And like dragon looking. Yeah, models. I just I just love like the detail in these models, the spines, the spine of this thing. Yeah, these huge models are the ones that are really fun to paint. Just because there's a lot of detail, just cool monstrosities. Yeah, and then we got this guy, so both of them kind of have these winged beasts. This is almost what I wish Kingdom Death monster models were like instead of being over grotesque. Yeah, they, they, yeah, I can definitely see where you're going with this. And I like that these come already assembled. Like yeah, you can yeah. play these right out of the box. Yeah, that's some of those Kingdom Death monster bo models are just hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a ton of pieces to those Kingdom Death models. All right, so I think that's the dwarf one, and then this is the robot faction. Okay, so this one is the uh, Razak. Yep. And, yeah, again, electric little things. We're going to have to bend that baby back a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of warping. The dwarf one, he has a drill and a cannon. Yeah, so, this, I mean, this guy's just looking cool as hell. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely want to play with that model. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. got those. And then there's more campaign cards and things in there. Um, I, I like the, the look of these cards. Yeah, like I said, it's great that the cards aren't their own. Because I hate when board games and tabletop companies just make dice and make cards their own unique size just to make it a pain in the butt for you. Yeah, I'm not, nobody wants to deal with that. So, yeah. we got those guys. Alrighty, so... That was our unboxing video for the Edge Dawnfall. Um, we hope that you enjoyed it. I, I mean, I think that definitely a Kickstarter well worth backing. Yeah, there's really a ridiculous amount of good looking models in this Kickstarter. I mean, just this box along with the six factions would be worth, I mean, easily have $300 worth of, of miniatures in there. And then the fact that you get the two other factions, you get the, you get the, boss box you get all the, the terrain stretch goals. yeah there's just so much plastic and the beautiful thing like we were talking about with king death monster you have to assemble it all and it's in tons of pieces and sprues yeah. yeah yeah this is already assembled you can literally just pull it out and play and that's that's pretty big for a lot of people because if you had to assemble all this stuff that would be a nightmare yeah i i really look forward to the fact that the factions are asymmetrical in this game I think that that's a really cool addition, especially for anyone that's ever played a game like Twilight Imperium, where you like to see those different counterpoints. Uh, that's going to be something that you find in this game that I think is outstanding. And so um, usually you you tell me, you know, hey, you're backing all these crazy Kickstarter. What, so what do you think of this one? Is this one that you're, you're going to want to play? I mean, model-wise, I would just want to paint them. I mean, okay. I, I have to look at how it actually plays because... I've seen other games that have been similar and they play kind of clunky and then they just fall to the wayside. Uh, one that kind of comes to mind is, I think it was RuneScape. Okay. Maybe that was what it's called. But it was a fantasy-based game. It had movement trays and it was, it was just a clunky game. It, the models were okay. It just wasn't fun to play, really. Sure. Uh, this game, the models are better than that and it's a hex-based system, so that's not going to be too clunky. It's just how you determine what happens in the game that I'll be interested to learn about. But I think this could be something that you just invite a bunch of people over and you just, you know, bash it out, do a campaign, go another step. I think the campaign mode will be the thing I like best about this game. I don't see me wanting to get competitive with a game like this. Yeah. I think it's something where you invite people over and like, hey, let's do the next step in this campaign. Yeah, I, th I think the campaign mode is going to be a great strength of this. And then the thing that I also love is one to four players. So if no one wants to play, somebody that wants to do solo, they can do that. And if you have a group that wants, you know, more people involved, you can do that as well. Yeah, I think that the campaign is where this thing's really going to shine because there, there was a lot of depth just from looking at the different types of campaigns you could do. And I think that once you get done with one, that's going to really inspire you to try another one or try a different faction and yeah it just it seems pretty exciting to me there's a lot of stuff and a lot to kind of dive into which is chris doesn't normally read the rules but i'm gonna make him read the rules if he wants us to play this <laughs> no you're gonna watch like a playthrough video oh. and then you can teach me how to play it fair fair but, yeah there we oh. go 
Yeah. So make sure that you guys like, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to do more of this online content just because we want to build up the video as well as our podcast, Rage Quit Wire. So we're really kind of growing it. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And yeah, just we're really excited to do more of this unboxing, more playthrough videos. And maybe maybe once we learn how to play it, we'll kind of do a how to play uh, the edge. Yeah, uh, that, that sounds like a good plan. So until then, this game has dice. Roll those dice. Throw that salt. We're out. The Edge Downfall is not a sponsor.